Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Alaikum salam rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the meaning of seeing a purple light and also a blue light during the meditation? Uh, alhamdulillah, purple light is good, blue light is good too. Just keep your eyes closed. Don't, don't, don't try to see through the eyes and this is a vision through the heart. So if you're looking through your eyeballs then you're seeing like shades and moves and flashes. So that we try to avoid, this is not the, that type of vision. Spiritual vision is that you bend the head so that to avoid trying to look through your eyes. Spiritual vision is you bend the head and with your iman and your faith the shaykh is right there in front of you. With your bent head the shaykh is in front of you with the eye of your soul reflecting like a projection in front of you. That your heart is reflecting that reality out and you don't have to see it completely clear because we have to acknowledge to ourselves, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And that my shaykh is watching me and keep that. Every whisper comes into your head, no but your sandwich, no but your email, no but this, but that, but this. And how much you can keep firm that the shaykh is in front of me, that please Sayyidi dress me from your light, dress me under your nazar. And that to receive from his tajalli and from his lights inshaAllah and build that relationship through your soul. Don't ask your dunya questions because all those answers will come back from your own nafs, that's very dangerous. Never ask anything from the material world, this is only about spirituality. As soon as you enter into a question from the material world, your nafs will answer you back. That's why people go and say, oh no, I said like this, I did do like this and it came back, yes I should do that because that was your nafs. That connection is for heavens. So you connect, say, please dress me from light, please dress me from blessings, please inspire within my heart and then breathing and just trying to absorb that light. So these are spiritual practices. We don't try to communicate with that connection and say, okay, what should I do, which, which stocks should I buy, what's like this, what's like that. Actually as soon as you do that, that connection is now no longer real and you're just communicating with your nafs and your hawa. So these are only for spiritual practices inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum ya shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, how awliyaullah sleep less despite it, they perform well physically and mentally at daylight where science says six to eight hours sleep must be taken to human for physical and mental health. Wow, that's like a doctor, you must be like a doctor asking that. <laughs> Allah can do whatever Allah wants. You can sleep 10 hours like most potheads and you're not well rested. So what does that mean? So this can't be based on hours uh, of input and energy out, uh, output. You put in 10 hours of sleep and you're going to have like immense energy? No, because there are people who are doing sort of inappropriate things, they sleep 20 hours a day. They wake up for a few hours, do something again and go back to sleep. So it's not the sleep that energizes us, it's an energy. So after spiritual nights with a lot of practices it's very difficult to sleep because your battery is so fully charged with, with energy. So that's showing us that actually the energy sustains the physicality and sleep is necessary as to not oppress the physical requirements. So a few hours of, of good sleep just to energize and to, to recharge the cells, alhamdulillah is, is enough. But to, to oversleep and thinking we're going to have more energy, we don't need that energy. We need the ibadah and the worshipness. On times of Ramadan, those whom are working, it's advised that you sleep in a little bit longer. If this is the first Ramadan for you and having a difficulty for you, the earlier you wake, the longer your day. So for those whom are having difficulty, if they can slow down their work schedule during Ramadan, and sleep in a little bit, relax a little bit and so inshaAllah they can pass the energy easier and that they can do their practices without uh, too much difficulty. So there's all sorts of ways for Allah to make, make the practices to be easier for people to accomplish. So many people with busy schedules and Ramadan they shut it down so that they can sort of put their self towards their ibadah, their worshipness or at least slow the pace 
of work done. If they can, if they can't then alhamdulillah they continue and Allah grants them a reward for struggling very hard. InshaAllah. Mm. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah If one is heavily afflicted by jinns during Ramadan, is there any practices that can help to get rid of the whispers to help the fasting of the ear in this blessed month? Wait, what was that again? Lost me. If one is heavily <coughs> affected by jinns mm. during Ramadan, is, are there any practices that can help to get rid of the whispers to help the fasting of the ear in mm. this blessed month? Yeah, the, it, everybody is affected by energy, everybody is affected by waswas, that's just the system in place. Anytime somebody is trying to improve themselves, shaitan has no motivation for people to improve themselves. That will be a given, that is the battle. So you have to have your ta'weez, you have to have the ta'weez on the house, you have to do your salawats, your zikrs, your istighfars. All of the etiquettes that are given have an energy that they produce and most important the meditation. The more you're meditating and connecting, the more your soul becomes powerful. When your soul is becoming powerful, it's pushing negative energy away. So we said before like in, in these times where you have the thing that kills the flies, there's a light, ultraviolet light, you plug it in and it starts to zzz, the light of it's so strong. If the fly comes it gets electrocuted and goes. But if the person's light is not strong, all negative energies are all around them and that's the problem. When he's all around no doubt he's whispering, talking, slapping, everything. But the energy has to be built with the madad because you don't have the energy yourself, it's not in you. The energy has to be sent to you. If it was in you then nobody would need a book, no would need a messenger, nobody would need the Divine, everybody would be Divine. So Allah just sent us with a very small amount of that charge until we did our madad. When we did our madad we fell in love. What was love? Love was the light coming into the heart. This is not a love we can make from our head. This is a love as soon as we connect they send a light into the heart. That light makes us to love the Divine. That light makes us to love anything that represents the Divine. Why do you love Prophet so much? Because it represents Allah's Divinely light. My love for Allah is so intense that the only one whom fulfilled that love is Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of that mirror as I draw close to Prophet it is the reflection of Allah that dressing you. So that's the reality of ishq and love. Because how the, the love of Allah going to, to fulfill me is going to annihilate me. That's what Sayyidina Musa asked, Ya Rabbi let me see you. If anything you see you would be dressed by its power. If you saw the Divine it would dress you from the power of Allah saying, you can't handle that. Even you're a Prophet of mine you can't. So then you, can you go above the six Prophets of Allah These are the six great Prophets of Allah no, impossible. So as a result of that example why Allah gave these examples in Qur'an so that however big we think we are, you're not anything close to Sayyidina Musa So then, oh that direct hit will annihilate me. So then Allah make it then easier and easier and easier that go to the shaykhs, go to the lovers. From these lovers find the shaykhs. From the shaykhs they are the reflection of Prophet upon this earth. And as a result of staying in their company lights are dressing, lights are dressing, lights are dressing until the person becomes a shaqeen in love of Sayyidina Muhammad and then Prophet's light is then dressing and blessing them. That light is the light of Allah When you're in the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah well what's the power of that? La ilaha illallah, that's the secret. But can you go to La ilaha illallah directly? 
No. If you can, and you say you can, then let's go to the power plant and put your finger in their power outlet that takes the wires. Ah, Ahmad, where's the wires from the power plant that go to like all the city lines? Go grab one of those lines and hold them directly. If you survive that, then oh, mashallah, you're a very powerful person. <laughs> I saw a monkey on Facebook tried that. Yeah. He touched the line, <laughs> it was done, <laughs> finished, yeah. That's the electrical line. How are you going to hold Allah's power? And Allah would just say, if I send my power and my speech, Allah's power is what? Speech, qul. Oh, I'm not going to grab your hand, Allah's going to speak. He says, if I send my speech, it will be dust. Nothing can contain my speech. Sayyidina Jibreel doesn't hear Allah he hears Sayyidina Muhammad That's what Allah clarifies in Ayatul Kareem, I speak, if I speak to your mountains on your earth it'd be dust. But I speak to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad firm because Allah created that heart for that purpose. The son al Qadim, the ancient tongue for Allah not Sayyidina Jibra'il, not an angel hears Allah's because to hear Allah means you can contain, you can contain the energy and whatever kilowatts people want to understand, whatever qudra and force, there's nothing, nothing that can contain the qaf of Allah except the lamb and lisan of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why lamb has lam alif meem. Not Lam Alif Jim from for Jibreel, nobody can contain it. Sayyidina Jibreel as salam only can contain the Nukht and that's why the Nukht was given under for his ability to take the wahi of Sayyidina Muhammad So always from La ilaha illallah the message comes to Muhammadun Rasulullah and then Prophet distribute. And give all of the wahi for all the prophets of Allah Wa As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as rahmatullah Sayyidi you had mentioned in your sohbah that Rabb means Lord and does not refer to Allah. Yes. Who then are we referring to when we say Subhana Rabbi Alala in our salah? Huh? Subhana Rabbi al Ala. Yeah. We didn't say it doesn't mean Allah. It says that you cannot, it's when you have a tafsir means now, tafsir is ex exergies, you can explain it, it's not finite, right? So the concept of tafsir means that what you understand is not finite, it's not that's it written in stone, goodbye. Because that's not the way the word was used. So the word was used, Rabb as in Lordship and whom governs, so Arab culture was Rabbi Shah, who's the lord of this town which was gov governor, govern, who governs this area, Rabbil Bayt, who's the lord of this house. So the man of the house who comes, I'm a Rabbil Bayt. Was you call him shirk at that time and beat him up? He's Rabbil Bayt, this shirk. <laughs> no, so it was a part of known culture and known Arabic. When it became exclusively to Allah is when they wanted to cut Muhammadun Rasulullah out from that stuff of Allah. So no, it's not, not, not that at all, Rabbiul Ala is Allah the Lord Most High. But to get to this Rabb and to this understanding requires all of these practices. So who knows himself, Arafa Nafsahu, Arafa Rabbahu. Who's the Rabb of who? Rabbahu. <laughs> huh? So this, that in itself even has understanding. One you have to know your Rabb, so the guy is doing all sorts of bad things, he can't claim my Lord is Allah I said, no your Lord is cigarettes because you can't stop. Your Lord is drinking because you can't stop. So you can't claim Allah is your Lord otherwise you would have fulfilled His covenant and obligations upon you. So we have lords that are governing us and Surat al-Yusuf alif lam ra is Allah's dalil in Qur'an. 
throughout Surat Al-Yusuf Allah is using this word of Rabb. So when He talks to His own Messenger, He says that, why you followed your Rabb in reference to His King who He was the servant of His King. So there are examples and dalils in Surat Al-Yusuf in which Allah is talking to His Prophet and saying, why you betrayed your Rabb, why you don't follow your Rabb? And that's why it's coded Alif Lam Ra. These are for us to understand rububiyah and that you are Lord first of your desires. Then you are under the Lordship of whoever is given an authority. Wulil Amri Minkum means the police, they have an authority over you. Allah gave them a badge, didn't give you one. So you have to obey. That's why we have the best of manners. You're supposed to obey anyone with an authority. You like it, you don't like it, Allah gave them a badge, didn't give you one. So it means then they are the people of authority. You don't have to like their authority, doesn't matter. But Allah gave them an authority. Allah allowed somebody to be a mayor, a governor. If Allah wants somebody to be a prime minister, they're prime minister. If Allah wants the person to leave, they're leaving. No matter how much they want to put glue on their, their seat and sit, they can't. Because maybe it saves their life to leave. So everything is in Allah's hands. Now that's a level of Atiullah, Ati Rasulul Amri Minkum. Then when we understood those lords, now what's the Lord that governs us into the heavens? Who are the who are the lordly souls? Rabbaniyoon. <laughs> Rab, Rab. So, right? Once I understood the lords that govern my lower desire, my lower characteristic, who are then Rabbaniyoon? Who learned the book and taught the book? Then these are the Salihin, these are all the Ibadullah, and then all the way up to Sayyidina Muhammad. They are big lords, lofty lords. Then above all that if you can reach Rabbi Al-A'la, the one most high, most magnificent, most munificent. You know. So alhamdulillah, these are all darajats of trying to reach. But to come and claim right away, I'm, I'm submitting to Allah it's arrogant. Especially if, if the shaykhs want to talk to you and teach you that you're not submitting to anything. Because what do you see? You gave your shahada, I bear witness, there's nothing but Allah and that uh, Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. and people bear witness with never ever witnessing. So that means Allah didn't accept your shahada, otherwise He would have made you to witness, La ilaha ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluhu and you should be able to see Prophet wasallam in your spiritual vision. Then Allah accepted your first pillar. If Allah didn't accept your first pillar, then what to be so arrogant about? InshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum, Shaykh Nurjan. Walaykum as salaam uh, I think many sisters were asking this question. Um, given the importance of wudu, could you please advise the sisters? What practices are permissible during that time of the month? Are we still allowed to recite the daily awrad? Yeah, this is a common sense question. If people memorize something, is Allah asking you to take your mental memory off? You memorized it, right? Can you unmemorize something during any time of the year? No. If you memorized it, you can recite it through your heart. What was asked of you is don't touch anything. Don't pick up the Qur'an and don't pray because you're not able to keep your wudu. So that's, that's it. But whatever you have memorized, you memorized. The people whom are hafiz, they're hafiz. You can't de-hafiz them during certain times. So no, it's common sense that whatever you have by memory, you're free to use your memory, Allah put it in your heart. Our practices especially is keep your wudu at all times. That's not a time in which you, you just can roam freely without wudu, you're going to come under attack. So under that time you want to be more careful and keep washing, keep your wudu and, 
and keep all the spiritual practices to keep that, that sense of protection. But you can't make your salah and you can't hold the Qur'an inshaAllah. But you still wash and clean so that not to have a spiritual attacks. Especially if the person's darajat begin to, to grow that becomes a very sh a difficult time of attacks. So all the practices still uh, are intact except the salah and picking up Qur'an. But whatever people have by memory inshaAllah Allah grant them that. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what's the reality of someone stealing from you? Do you get their good deeds? Anybody who takes something from, from us, they, they, they give you their good deeds and they carry your burden. So if they steal something physically or, 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 or it's, they steal a word or say a bad thing, that's the, the trade-off that they'll take your, de your bad deed and Allah will give from their good deeds into the hisab of that person. And anything that goes, Allah's the best of those whom replaces. So if it's something that you know you can verify and you have to verify and you go and say, okay if you think you're going to get something back that's one thing. If not and you turn our case over to Allah people are stealing the inheritance of each other daily and that is the most poisonous stealing that Allah will, will punish the person in dunya and punish them in the hereafter. It is the most poisonous sustenance for someone to eat is the inheritance of their family. And that's the most predominant one signing this, signing that, cheating this, cheating that. The one whom stays silent in the midst of all of those poisonings, Allah is the one to grant the greatest reward. So our, our rewards come from Allah So it's, it's best to turn over cases to Allah and don't, don't worry about these things inshaAllah. But you see them punished in this world. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Again a few people have asked this question, Sayyidi you're a little uh, confused in my understanding, are all shaitans chained up during Ramadan? We thought they were all chained. Well why would they be killing Muslims the most? Biggest wars were in Ramadan. So the concept of shaitan being chained was that shait Prophet described that shaitan runs through your blood. So as soon as you fast. And that was also a description from Prophet is that the shaitan runs through your blood, chain him by fasting. As soon as we fast what happens? The blood and the energy that coming through the sustenance, food and drink is affecting the mouth into the belly. Shaitan takes that energy and is agitated and moves by it. So the, the food and the drink is what shaitanic power is thriving. That's why we make du'a on the food, make sure that it's a halal food, make sure it's a clean food and the energy of people are being put onto the food. So when we go places and they're not washing, they're not clean, they're putting all their grief and misery, anger but character into that food. And then people eat it without du'a and they now take in that energy and that shaitan is like a wild horse inside of them giving them all sorts of bad thoughts, bad, bad everything. So fasting is Allah's time to chain the shaitan. That as soon as they enter into the fast, the tajalli comes, that's what we say is the rahmah. As soon as the tajalli opens, the shaitans are locked with a chain because the servant has now entered into siyam. And the, the sifat for this month is al-muntaqeem. Allah and the reality of this month is 81, which 18 is right hand, left hand is 81, right? So we're stamped on this left hand with Sifat al-Muntaqeem, Allah is the avenger, right? 81. So Allah is avenging His servants in Ramadan. As a result of avenging the servant, Allah's qudra and might begin to hit and burn the shaitan that keeps coming after the servant. So that's why we need Sifat al-Muntaqeem that Allah dressing and we have it in the burda. 
that Allah grant us, Ya Rabbi, that grant me from your sifat al muntaqim because I've been overridden, I'm trying to worship you, but this shaitan is not leaving me alone, avenge me. And Allah for Ramadan, I'm going to avenge you and begin now bombarding the shaitan very fiercely. And as a result, shaitan then leaves these fasting people alone, Allah is going to burn them. And their fast themselves is burning the inner shaitan, the outer shaitan, so that they can now enter into that rahmah and succeed in their fast. And the name that corresponds with this lock is Sayyidina Dulfadl. So Prophet's name, 81st name is Sayyidina Dulfadl. The, 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 the source of grace and emanation. So that's how lock and key operates. With Al Muntaqim comes to avenge, and Dul Fadl is the grace that dresses upon the servant. Why? Because of Allah burning the shaitan, now they're, they're exposed to receive these blessings. So on the month of Ramadan, Sayyidina Dul Fadl is. Dressing and blessing the soul with these lights, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ali sahbi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyat al aliyah, sa'iru sadatina, sadaqeena al Fatiha. People are hungry, huh? People ask about bayah. Huh? People ask me about bayah. Yeah, inshaAllah. Hold on, Lloyd, we're going to do one last thing before you cut the lights. Fa'awzu billah, inshaAllah, with bayatul naqshbandiyat al aliyah to the heart of Sultan al Awliya, my Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, and the 41st Shaykh of Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil, and the barakah and blessings of Awliyaullah, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Hatan Kabani. فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين يبيونك إنما يبيون الله يا الله فوق أيديهم فمن نغوث فإنما يغوث على نفسه ومن أوفى بما أحد أن الله فسيرت أجرا عظيما رضينا بالله ربا وبإسلام دينا وبسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول والنبي wa bi Qur'ani kitaban wallahumma naqulu waqeel wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa qabbilna bi Sayyidina Sultanul Awliya ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani Shaykhuna wa Murshidina wa Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil Shaykhuna wa Murshidina wallahumma naqulu waqeel Allahu 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 Haqq Allahu 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 Haqq Allahu, 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 Haqq. Haqqu Ya Rabbi illa sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa la mashayikhina fi tariqat al-Nashbandiyat al-Aliyah. Khasatan Ruhi Imam Tariqa, Gawta Khaliqa, Shan Nashban, Muhammad wa Isa al-Bukhari, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Naz Maad al-Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabbani, Shaykh Adnan Kabbani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mabdi Khaliq al-Khujdwani, Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umma, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima al-Tazar alayhi salam, Shamat al-Fardani Abdul Rafu Yamani Yusuf al-Siddiq, Imam al-Arifin, Lisan al-Mutaqalimeen, Araf Tayyar Maruf ibn Murhan, Burhan Karam Naghawth al-Anam, Sahib Abu Bakr Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, wa sayra wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha. Ya Shafat Ya Rasulul Kareem, Madakum wa Nazarakum, Ameen. Fa niyata khatma khawjiqan, inshaAllah, fa'awzu billahi min ash-shaitanir rajeem.